Thank Turning you. to Martha McSally. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, let me first say that I'm one of those pilots that would be at the quote-unquote edges of the envelope of what you talked about there. I would have to gain about 15 pounds in order to be able to fly the F-35 today. But uh, just uh, so I understand, the little switcheroo thing you're talking about that uh, the pilots are going to have to move, uh, delaying uh, the chute coming out, is that putting them in increased risk, though, in like a zero-zero situation um, where obviously every uh, nanosecond actually counts? Yeah, actually, uh, as it turns out, ma'am, um, for a lightweight pilot, delaying the opening of the, the chute until the, the uh, seat slows down does not increase at all um, the risk of ground impact or that pilot getting out of the seat because a lightweight pilot in the catapult phase gets shot up higher. Okay, got so it. We had margin. Got it. Okay, thank you. Uh, and let me first say, uh, like the chairman said, uh, you know, we need a fifth generation fighter capability. Uh, I'm a strong supporter of us developing this capability. As an airman myself, uh, people take, I think sometimes for granted, air superiority and what that takes uh, with our near peers and making sure we have denied access. I've been to the factory myself and you know strongly support us uh, developing this capability for our national security and our warfighter. Uh, but I am concerned about the, uh, this airplane is replacing all of our legacy fighters and the whole jack of all trades uh, master of none, uh, and specifically it uh, replacing the A-10 in the closer support missions that it uniquely uh, brings to the fight. When we talked in April, uh, we had a discussion about uh, some limitations in that replacement of the unique capability in close air support, and I'll just run through them uh, just as a reminder. In the A model, some of these were night capability, lack of the ability to pass nine lines via data, time on station being 20 to 30 minutes, uh, but then even in the follow-on capabilities, the munitions only 180 bullets, uh, time on station being only 45 minutes, uh, and Dr. Gilmore agreed that the F-35 would not be able to survive a direct hit uh, and uh, like the A-10 can and still allow the pilot to at least fly to friendly territory so that they're not taking POW uh, and lit on fire in a cage like we've seen happen to the Jordanian pilot. So these are really important capabilities. Uh, so these shortfalls were identified in the April hearing uh, I was uh, glad to see that uh, in August, Dr. Gilmore announced that there would be a head-to-head -head test uh, against the A-10 and the F-35, but uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I think you were not uh, supportive of that test, and I think you said it wasn't a good use of taxpayers' money. Um, I, I disagree with you there, uh, Jerome Bogdan. I think it's a very good use of taxpayers' money. If the F-35 is going to replace the A-10, we need to identify whether we're going to have a decrease in a, the unique capabilities uh, in that uh, mission set. And that includes the loiter time, uh, the lethality, 1,174 bullets, the ability to take a direct hit, uh, and all that, uh, you know, all that the A-10 brings to the fight. So I just wanted to get your perspective on the record about that head-to-head -head test, how that came about. Uh, and also, I'm skeptical about it, quite frankly, with all the things we've seen the Air Force try and do to go against the will of this Congress and backdoor uh, retiring the A-10. Uh, you can set up a test to have any sort of result you want. You know? So is the test going to specifically address not high and high uh, sophisticated air defense circumstances, but where we have air superiority and those unique capabilities of the loiter time, the lethality, the maneuverability, and uh, you know to do a continuous cast fight and direct uh, take a direct hit, will that be a part of that test? Sure, ma'am, if you don't mind, I'll, yeah. I'll come back first. Uh, so I, I think uh, you're probably familiar that the chief came back and said we're supportive of executing the comparative testing. After he and called it silly, but yes. And so at this point right now, we were working closely with our Air Force uh, Operational Test Center folks are working yeah. closely with DOT and E to formulate exactly what that test will look like. Okay. Uh, specifically looking at multiple scenarios, both in contested and permissive environments, uh, looking at different ranges, uh, time to arrive on target, loiter time, all those types of things will be incorporated for the appropriate analysis to ensure that at the end of the day, we're delivering uh, the platform that's effective and suitable in the environments we're gonna operate it in. Great, I'm interested in continuing to you know interact and see how that test is going. General Bogdan, you got anything else to add? Yes, ma'am. Um, what you described just now um, was exactly what I think should be done with the F-35. And that is tested in a realistic operational environment for the CAS mission that the Air Force intends the F-35 to do. Right. Not the CAS mission that the Air Force intends the F-35 to do looking like an A-10. The problem that I have is that money that I'm going to spend mm -hmm.
doing the testing on the A-10 could be used elsewhere. And I know the outcome of that test. I'll give you an example. You have a decathlete in the Olympics and you have a 100 meter sprinter. If I put the 100 meter sprinter and a decathlete on the starting line for a 100 meter sprint, I don't have to run that race to know who's gonna win it. I don't need to test the A-10 to figure out what the F-35 can do in a close air support role. What I would prefer to do is test the F-35 in its close air support role as the Air Force sees the requirements for that mission for the F-35. I hear you, and I'm out of time, but I think us envisioning that we're never going to have close air support where guys are on the run, they're out of ammo, they're doing a mirror flash into your eye, they are you know don't have time to do standoff casts because of the complex circumstances. If we think that's never going to happen again, I think we're, we're you blind. You are correct. You are out of time. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.